Hello and welcome to Super Nintendo Classics. In this installment, the game is Rock and Roll Racing, released in 1993, developed by Silicon and Synapses, nowadays known as Blizzard. Rock and Roll Racing was released for the Super Nintendo as well as the Sega Genesis, although the Super Nintendo version is a little bit better than the Sega Genesis version, so if you have the choice, make sure you get the Super Nintendo version. This game is an isometric racing game, very similar to um, RC Pro-Am by Rare on the NES. Here you can choose the, your main character, and basically the only thing that it changes um, from person to person is their attributes. Whether they're going to be uh, better at acceleration and top speed, or if they're going to be better at cornering and handling and that sort of thing. So I chose that for this, uh, for this video. So you can choose your car, and you can also choose the color of your car. This kind of reminds me of the Commodore 64 version of, um, of, what was it, Hot Wheels. That was a game that I played as a little kid. <laughs> now the game gets its title Rock and Roll Racing because it uses basically MIDI versions of classic rock songs. So here you have uh, back Black Sabbath's um, Paranoid. And throughout the entire game, you're just going to hear music very similar to this. Your goal is to, uh, you know, not only get in first place, but you want to collect all of these power-ups as much as you can. The game was very notable for its time because it had extremely, um, it had an extremely vocal and clear um, commentator, especially on the Super Nintendo version, where he would be saying things that would be, you know. Like like something was like a real person. Anyone old enough to remember this game when they were kids um, will know and be able to quote the various things that the guy says, <laughs> you know, because it's so iconic. Especially his um, his comments when you. Uh, Finish the race. You know, it's funny for nerds like me because you know when I hear a lot of these songs, like like uh, like Paranoid here, it's like I, I I remember like I remember hearing it on the radio or something, and I was thinking, hey, that's that song from uh, Rock and Roll Racing. So there, there it is. There's the line that's that's always hilarious about the the fourth, the whoever comes in last place is in another time zone. So here you got uh, Highway Star. Viper fades into last. Viper jams into first. Viper is about to blow. Launches himself. I fell off. <laughs> I know I got stuck. Alright, now I have to try and make up for lost time. Shred is about to blow! Viper is dominating the race! When I was a kid, um, I got new games very seldomly. It was like you get like maybe two games a year, maybe three or four, depending on you know if you get them used or whatever. But uh, you know, back in the day, the way that I would experience new games would be to rent them, and such was the case with Rock and Roll Racing. This is not a game that I owned. But something that I would rent, and it's something that I rented more than once. So now that I own the game in my adulthood, it's kind of like 
sweet satisfaction, you know? It's amusing every single time you hear it, even after all these years. Winning races also earns you money, so you can use this money in the shop um, where you can upgrade your car. It's pretty much just like RC Pro M once again. So, I'm gonna buy the Defender. Yeah. Sounds radical. The stage is set. The green flag drops. And yes, that is the uh, Peter Gunn theme. Viper jams into first. Or more famously known as the Spy Hunter theme. That's me. Viper headed the wrong way. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's amusing. Viper looks lost out there. Parkwin is dominating the race. Parkwin powers up. Because the game is not rendered in mode 7, or um, really has anything much going on, um, the Super Nintendo was able to keep up with the game and it has no slowdown, which is really great because, you know, a game like this with slowdown would really suffer um, the pace of the game. Last lap. The Game Boy Advance um, later saw a port of the Super Nintendo version um, many years later, uh, I think it was like 2003 or 2004. But the GBA version sort of, again, has the common problem that most of the Super Nintendo to Game Boy Advance versions ha suffer from, which is um, lower resolution makes the game much harder to play. And he is? Of course. Of course he is. So I don't think I could buy anything else. I don't have enough money yet. Tire upgrades cost $30,000. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to get out of the... And you have to go back to the exit sign. And now you have Let Born to be Wild. Begin! Super Nintendo prices have really shot up in recent years, but this one especially, you don't really expect to find this game for cheap, so if you're looking for a copy, you know, do expect to pay a bit of premium for it. The Sega Genesis version is also up there in price, but not nearly as much as the Super Nintendo original is. Or I, not, I shouldn't say original, but uh, Super Nintendo superior version is. What makes the Super Nintendo version a little bit better is because it runs at a higher resolution, and it also has a much clearer announcer. In the Sega Genesis version of the game, um, the announcer um, replaces the, uh, the background music. So the background music literally just stops for a minute, and then the announcer finishes what he has to say, and then the music resumes again. It's not terrible, but it is very jarring, especially when you compare it to the Super Nintendo version, it has such a clear announcer, and the music is just better, too, because, you know, the um, Super Nintendo chip versus the, uh, the Genesis FM sound, you know, you get into that debate. This is a game that simply sounds better on the Super Nintendo than it does on the Genesis. Although, there are Genesis versions of games that were on both platforms that sound better as well. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.